Hello and welcome to this screencast ladies and gentlemen in which we are going to continue to talk about the pure expectations theory and this time we are going to approach the notational framework that is involved with it. From the previous screencast you will remember that we examined two strategies. Strategy number one was to invest one dollar in a one year bond and when that matured you reinvested the proceeds in another one year bond and that gave you this uh, amount of return in notational terms. Strategy number two my friends was to invest one dollar straight away in a two year bond and when you did that your return in notational terms was equal to this item here. Let us return back to strategy number one and this return and now let us simplify this. So let me put an equality sign and then let me deal with the first two terms here which are uh, written in the square brackets. First one is this item in the square bracket and then I have another square bracket inside which I have two uh, items. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up this one. What I'm going to do actually is I'm going to open up these brackets for you. So I'm going to pick up this one and multiply it with this one in the second bracket. So I get a one and then I'm going to put a plus sign and then this one again is going to be multiplied with this term here. So that is going to give me an I2. So let me write an I2 here. After that, I put a plus sign again and then I focus my attention on this item I1, which I multiply with the first item in the second square bracket, which is one. So that gives me an I1. So let me write here that and then I'm going to put a plus sign again. This time I'm going to pick up this term and I'm going to multiply it with the second term in the second bracket. So that is going to give me I1 times I2. So let me write it here I1 and then times I2. So after that what I see is that I have a minus 1 here. So I'm going to copy that minus 1 and simply paste it at this place. Now what I see here is that this minus 1 is going to cancel out with this plus 1. So I'm going to be left with this item, this item and this item here. Now this item I1 times I2 my friends is going to be pretty small to be of any consequence. So I'm going to ignore that and that will uh, leave me with only an I1 and I2 and that is what I'm going to write here in the next step. So what I write here is now I1 and I put a plus sign and then I write an I2. So what I realize is that if I follow strategy number one, my return is simply equal to the sum of the two short term interest rates that is I1 and I2. Now let me focus my attention to strategy number two which is to invest $1 straight away in a two year bond and that gives me this return. Let me now simplify this term for you here. If I look at this item here, if I forget this minus one for a moment and just focus my attention on this item here, I will realize that this is in the format of A plus B whole squared. So just like we open our A plus B whole, square, whole squared formula, we can just open it up in the same way. So one squared is going to give me a one and then I'm going to put a plus sign and then I'm going to square up the second term that is I2T. So let me write I and then let me write a 2T and then let me close this bracket and square it up. And then after that, I'm going to put a plus sign again and then I'm going to write 2 times 1 times this term here because I'm writing my term of 2AB. So I write a 2 and this A is 1 so I ignore that and then this B is equal to I2T. So I just write here 2 times I2T. So let me start a bracket and inside let me write I and then it 2T. Close the bracket small one and close the square bracket as well. After that what I'm going to do is I'm seeing this minus 1 here which I copy and I'm going to paste it after this so that I finally realize that this minus one is going to cancel out with this plus one and I'm going to be left with these two terms only I2T squared and two times I2T. Now this I2T squared my friends is going to be again very very small to be of any consequence. So I'm going to ignore that. 
so that I am left with only one term and that is 2 i 2 t. So, let me write here 2 inside the bracket let me write i and then a 2 t and let me close my relevant brackets. So, from strategy number 2 my friends then my return is simply equal to 2 times the long term interest rate i 2 t please realize is a long term interest rate it is a 2 year interest rate. So, twice the uh, amount of the long term interest rate is going to be my return from strategy 2. In the previous screencast we saw that the returns from both these strategies were equal. So, that is what we have written here since both returns are equal we can equate this item here this one. So, let me copy it and paste it here this one can be said as being equal to this item here. So, let me copy this and also paste it at this place after the equality sign and what I can do now is that I can take this 2 over to the left hand side uh, where it is going to get divided by i 1 plus i 2 and on the right hand side I am going, going to be left with simply i 2 t. So, let me write that here in this equation space my i 2 t is going to be let me write here first i 2 t and that is simply going to be equal to i 1 plus i 2 and I am going to now divide this thing by 2 because I am carrying the 2 over to the other side. So, what I see from this equation here is that on the left hand side I have written the long term interest rate that is the 2 years interest rate and on the right hand side what I have here is simply an arithmetic average of the short term interest rates. This I 1 is a short term interest rate and this I 2 is also a short term interest rate because these are interest rates for only one year periods. So, when I divide them by 2 I am just taking a simple average and that simple average of the short term interest rates my friends is equal to the long term interest rate. So, we have another finding here that we should remember and that is that the interest rate on the long term bonds which we have written here on the left hand side equals the average of short rates which are expected to occur over the life of a long bond. So, now uh, we can now rewrite this uh, result for an n year bond as well. This one is specifically related to a bond that matures in 2 years that bonds interest rate is going to be simply equal to the average of the two short term interest rates. Now, if the bond was maturing in n periods we would write an i and then inside the bracket we would write n and t. So, where n could be anything on the right hand side what we are going to write here in the numerator is going to be i and then in the bracket we are going to write a t and then we are going to put a plus sign and then write another i and in the bracket we are going to write a t plus 1. Now, let us stop here for a moment and realize that this term that we have written this item here i t plus 1 is the term that is applicable for the second time period, but what we are doing is that after the plus sign we are writing the digit 1 specifically the digit that we write after the plus sign if you observe is 1 less than the number of the time period that we are talking about. We are talking about time period 2 in this term, but we are writing the digit 1 here. So, likewise when we write the term for this third time period we are going to write an i and inside the bracket we are going to write t plus 2 here. Though now this term is uh, pertaining to this third time period we are writing this digit 2 here. And so, basically what we are doing is that when n is equal to 1 that is when we are talking about the first time period here this one we, we could have written this as t plus 0 as well, but since that does not matter we simply left it as i t. So, uh, when n is equal to 1 we can write it as a t plus 0 when n is equal to um, 2 we can write it as t plus 1 and when is n is equal to 3 we can write it as t plus 3 and so on. If this series goes on till n number of terms what we are going to have in the end is we are going to write an i and then inside the bracket what we are going to do is we are going to write a t and after that we will write an n minus 1 that is what it is. So, and in the denominator we are going to simply write an 
n. So that then uh, gives us the formula for a bond uh, that matures in n time periods. Its interest rate this one here is going to be equal to the average of all the short term interest rates. Um, uh, further readings my friends will tell you that out of the three term structure facts the pure expectation theory explains fact number one and fact number two but it does not explain fact number three which is that yield curves typically slope upwards. As homework my friends please read and find out why this is so. For now it's bye bye. Thank you very much for watching.